wonder of a king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great
His name Jesus. Jesus. Oh Jesus. Jesus, you're everything to me. Everything. everything. You're everything to me. to me you're everything to me thank you Jesus
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I will say that once again. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is so good to be found in the household of the Lord. So many places that we could be, whether you are in the sanctuary or on Facebook Live, we thank God for your being here. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you all of the praise and all of the glory and all of the honor father if we can simply say it this way you have been good you are good and you will be good thank you father for allowing us to simply call upon your name as unworthy as we are but father you have been an amazing god to us and we thank you father i ask you in the name of jesus that you will use me this morning i ask that you will speak to me and through me at the same time so that your people can receive a word. I thank you, Father, for what you are going to do and what you've already done. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Again, it is so good to see each and every one of you. We thank God for our music ministry that has blessed us once again. We give, we give God for give God the glory for each of them. Whether you are in the building today or whether you are watching on Facebook Live, good morning to each and every one of you. I am definitely excited to share with you a word from the Lord today. Uh, I hope you feel like being preached too. I feel like preaching. And so we will see what the Lord has to say. If you will grab your copy of God's word, we will go to the book of Jonah. 
to the book of Jonah chapter number four verses five through eleven again the Old Testament book the book of Jonah chapter number four we will look at verses five through eleven if you are able to stand, if you are in the sanctuary, if you are able to stand, we will ask that you will stand for the word of God. Again, the book of Jonah, chapter number four, verses five through 11. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Version of the text. The Bible may differ slightly from yours, but follow along as closely as you can. The Bible declares this. Then Jonah went out from the city and sat east of it. There he made a shelter for himself and sat under it in the shade until he could see what would happen in the city. So the Lord God appointed a plant and it grew up over Jonah to be a shade over his head to deliver him from his discomfort. Jonah was extremely happy about the plant. But God appointed a worm when dawn came the next day and it attacked the plant and it withered. When the sun came up, God appointed a scorching east wind and the sun beat down on Jonah's head so that he became faint and begged with all his soul to die, saying, Death is better to me than life. Then God said to Jonah, Do you have good reason to be angry about the plan? And he said, I have good reason to be angry even to death. Then the Lord said, You had compassion on the plant for which you did not work and which you did not cause to grow, which came up overnight and perished overnight. Should I not have compassion on Nineveh, the great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know the difference between their right and left hand, as well as many animals? Can you say amen for the reading of the word of God? If I could put a title to, to this message, I would title this message, Because He's God. Because He's God. You may be seated. He, because He's God. One of the amazing characteristics of the God that we serve is the fact that God is sovereign. One of the amazing characteristics of the God that we serve is the fact that God is sovereign, which means that God is free to do whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it, however he chooses to do it, in whatever season he wants to do it in. The beauty of the God that we serve is that God is sovereign, meaning that he is in complete and absolute control of all things. The fact that God is sovereign, it means that God does not move on your schedule or mine, but the true fact of the matter is God moves on his own divine schedule because he is God. That should give us a great amount of joy this morning. Because when you realize the fact that God is sovereign, that God can do and will do whatever he chooses to do, whenever he chooses to do it, at whatever time he chooses to do it, it should give us great joy because we realize that God is in complete and absolute control. I can look at the fact that God often selects the most unusual and most unlikely people. And if we were to be honest, some of the people that God has chosen, it has completely blown our minds because we did not believe that God would select that person. Until you pause and look in the mirror and begin to question the sanity of God, saying, why did God even select you? Because if we truly are honest with ourselves, we should not be selected by God. We should not be picked by God. To be perfectly honest, um, there are a myriad of other people that God could have selected and chosen, but the fact that he chose you, it shows you that he is completely sovereign. He can do what he wants to do whenever he wants to do it, however he wants to do it in whatever season he chooses to do it. If we even go a step further to realize how in control God is, nothing catches God by surprise. The bad news catches us, but it does not surprise God. God is in complete and absolute control. It is a beautiful thing that should cause praise to come from our mouths when we pause for a moment to realize that nothing happens haphazardly, but everything happens on a divine season and a divine schedule. Which means, Lady Noon, that sometimes when I think I'm late, sometimes I'm ahead. 
sometimes when I think I'm ahead, sometimes I'm right on schedule. Because my schedule does not look like God's schedule. Sometimes we look at things in our own eyesight, not realizing that God has us in the exact place that he wants us to be because he is completely sovereign. He could do what he wants to do whenever he wants to do it, however he chooses to do it. If I can push that a little bit more, some of us, this was not your career choice. You were driven into this because God is sovereign. God says, I am in complete and absolute control to the point that your will does not and cannot surpass my decision or call for your life. I can look at an individual by the name of Abraham when God chose him from Ur of the Chaldeans. Abraham did not go looking for God, but God went looking for Abraham because God is sovereign. As a matter of fact, David, when he was tending to Jesse's sheep, when Samuel came looking for a king of Israel, David didn't go looking for God, but God handpicked and selected him because God is sovereign. Push that a little bit further. For many of us, if you are watching or if you are here in the sanctuary, we can testify. You won't say anything publicly, but you will definitely, if you think over the course of your life, you can easily see that you should be disqualified and should have been disqualified a long time ago. Many of us, if not all of us, you weren't looking for God. You didn't seek God on the Saturday night at the revival, but God had to go seeking you, and he found you in some interesting and peculiar places, and that is because God is sovereign. I can shout over that, Big E, because I love the fact that my selection didn't have anything to do with you. I can shout over that because my healing didn't have anything to do with you. I can shout over that because my deliverance had absolutely nothing to do with you. It had everything to do with the fact that God wanted to do what he wanted to do in your life. And it had nothing to do with the people that don't like you. There are people that don't like you, people that talk about you, but that still does not negate the fact that God still picked and selected you. So the people that spoke negatively about you or the people that are against you really that is of no consequence because their hatred for you does not stop the love that God has for me. I believe sometimes we spend too much time on insignificant things and insignificant people. You begin to worry about what they said when in reality you should understand that no matter what they said, God still selected and picked me. If I can go a little bit further than that, we can understand that when the doctors did what they can do, the reason why you're walking around shouting and acting the way that you do is because God is in complete and absolute control. But there are also two sides of every coin. Because when we realize that God is sovereign, he can do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it, whenever he wants to do it. Sometimes that also brings some challenges to the believer. Because there are some things that God does, if we, are be, if we are completely honest, we simply do not understand. We don't understand why God took the loved one that you love so dearly. Sometimes you don't understand why you've gone through a tough season in your life. Why the finances are dried up. Why the, the, the help has stopped coming. And sometimes you wonder why you're sick in your body now, of all times now. While the tears are falling down your face, why am I going through what I'm going through at this particular season? But I will tell you that God is sovereign. He could do what he wants to do whenever he wants to do, however he wants to do it. This may not be a shouting message for you, but this may be a message for someone that you're in a season and you're wondering, am I still in the hand or the will of God simply because I have hit a dry place? I want to tell you that for many of us, if not all of us, you are right where God wants you to be in spite of what you are going through, in spite of the opposition, in spite of the demonic influences that seem to be uh, oppressing you and you seem to be in a depressed season in your life. But I want to tell you that God is still in absolute control over every aspect over your life. You may not understand or you may not get this today, but this may be a, a message you need to hear six weeks from now. Because right now, everything is looking beautiful in your life. Your life is looking like the weather is looking outside right now. 
about. Uh, but every now and then there's a storm that brews and you need to understand that just because the storm is brewing like a cup of coffee, that does not mean that God is still not in complete control over your life. This may be a message that I have to preach to myself from time to time, because sometimes we can become uh, preoccupied with things that really don't even matter. But God wants you to understand that if I am the God that you say that I am, no matter what is going on in your life, you understand that I am in complete and absolute control. This is the reason why, Sister Rachel, that I can thank God even when nobody else is in a season or wants to thank God because I understand that God is in control of my life. And if you believe that God is in control over your life, I believe that we should so show some signs every now and then. Yes, I believe that when God is in complete control over your life and every aspect of your life, you understand that even though the winds may blow, when the storms may rage, I know that trouble will not last always. I recognize that even when things are difficult in my season and difficult in my life, I understand that maybe it is a reason why I am in this predicament. Maybe God put me in this furnace for a particular reason. You do know that sometimes God allows storms to come into our lives because there is something that he's trying to get out of you that is on the inside of you. And the only way he can purify you is to allow you to go through your own furnace of affliction. And many times we like to uh, diagnose uh, the problems that we go through. And I believe that we have, uh, we have committed some severe cases of practice because we have blamed our issues on the devil when in actuality God says this ain't the devil babe this is not the devil that is opposing you I have you in the furnace of affliction because I got to burn some things out of you I have the wind that is blowing in your life because I want you to understand that even when you are down I'm still in control even when you don't know what's going on I'm still in control even when the finances are drying up I'm still in control even when you don't understand what's going on on in your life I'm still in control and I believe that this message today is for people that are going through their own trials this may, message may not be for 98% of the people because for 98% of the people everything is going good your kids are learning so good virtually so good virtually that the parents don't even need to be there your children are so wonderful the teachers are so good the community is so good your avenue is so good your car got a full tank of gas your bank account have a full tank have a full amount of money but for the two percent of the people in the room oh the storms are raging the winds are blowing and you're wondering God why is this happening to me why am I going through this right now it is simply because God is sovereign he can do what he wants to do when he wants to do it how he wants to do it so I have learned to thank God anyhow before I get deep into the message I've learned, Miss Vanessa, to thank God anyhow. I may not like it, but I thank God anyway. I may not agree with it, but God, I thank you anyway. This is the premise. This is what's happening in the book of Jonah. You know the book of Jonah. Many of you, you've gone to Sunday school. You know you've heard about the book of Jonah, that Jonah was swallowed up in the belly of a fish, and he stayed in the belly of a fish for three days, and three days later, he was spit up on dry ground. But if you only leave uh, the theme of Jonah to that you will miss the core message of the book of Jonah we see that God speaks to Jonah in chapter number one he speaks to Jonah and he says I want you to go to the city of Nineveh and I want you to preach a message to the Assyrians in that nation the Assyrian people are living in the city of Nineveh and God gives Jonah a command I want you to go down to Nineveh and preach against it and Jonah did like most of us will do when he does not agree with the prognosis or what God has for him Jonah got up and ran now let me tell you a reason why one of the reasons why Jonah got up and ran it it was not solely because he was disobedient to God which is a very a significant truth but one reason why Jonah ran is because the Assyrian people were afflicting harm on Jonah's people in other words Jonah's people the Israelites were being afflicted and eventually will go into Assyrian bondage so what God 
God wanted Jonah to do, I want you to go behind enemy lines and I want you to preach a message to the people that are destroying your own people. Okay, now hold on. Now wait a minute. Now, now I know you had your own opinion of Jonah, but what would you do if God told you to go to your enemy and prophesy and tell them a word from the Lord? Oh, to push it a little bit further. What if you, as an African American, God tells you to go down to the Klan rally after they have just whipped and torched your people? What if go down there and preach a message? Now it's a little bit different dynamic. Now when you realize in Jonah what he does, he gets on the on a boat, he pays a fee, and he goes down to Tarshish. But what I have learned about God, Deke Lavalis, you can run from God, but you simply cannot hide. Because what God begins to do, he appoints or prepares a storm, and the storm is raging on the boat. Let me tell you something. Sometimes the storm is raging on your boat, not because of you, but sometimes the storm is raging on the boat because of who you have in the boat with you. That's another message. I'm going to preach that another time. The storm is raging on the boat, and the people on the boat, Lady Noon, that go uh, to Jonah said, now wait a minute, we have figured out that the problem ain't us, that the problem is you. There is something about you that your God has caused this storm to come on our lives. Jonah said, well, I'm running from God. That's the reason why the storm has come. The best thing for you to do is to throw me overboard, and so that way I can die, and I don't have to do the will of God. They throw Jonah overboard, and what, what little does Jonah know that God appoints a fish to come and swallow Jonah, and now Jonah is in the belly of the fish for three days, because no matter how far you may go down, God still has a way of lifting you back up. Hey, let me pause real quick. This ain't for y'all. This for me. I want to thank God for every moment when I was going down, that, and I was dead wrong but God still delivered me. Do I have any delivered people? If you in the building or on Facebook Live that don't mind thanking God real quick, I was on my way down, but yet and still God delivered me. I like being around delivered folk. When I'm around delivered folk, they give a delivered praise. See, some people just give praise and worship because they copy off other people's test paper and they see what other people are doing. Oh, but when you've been delivered from your own fiery hell, you got your own praise, which means you can praise God if you want to, but I've got a praise that's all authentic that I didn't buy but I earned in the furnace of affliction anybody in there with me that don't mind praising God Jonah went all the way down oh we moved to miss to, to uh, Jonah chapter number two miss Davis I love Jonah chapter number two verses one through nine it highlights Jonah's downward spiral down the sea but then the Bible says when the fish came and swallowed up Jonah the book says that weeds were wrapped around my neck I almost died but then the Lord delivered me the Bible says that when Jonah was placed in the belly of the fish the Bible says in verse number 10 of chapter 2 that the fish spit Jonah up on the dry ground at the exact place where Jonah was to go in the first place oh I like to say it like this God said okay Jonah since you didn't want to go where I told you to go I'm going to bring my own Uber driver and I'm going to bring you to the place that I appointed for you in the first place hey I got to tell somebody that sometimes you may take the long way you may take the long road but God says you're going to go to a place that I've designed for you. I think there are some people in the building you are crying because you're taking the long road. But the long road is the best journey. I know it wasn't good for Jonah being in the belly of the fish. But now Jonah had a prayer in the belly of a fish. And if Jonah can pray in the belly of a fish, maybe you can pray in your hospital room. Maybe you can pray in your seat. Maybe you can pray in your own deliverance. I don't know who I'm talking to today. It seems like I'm talking to myself. But I'm good at talking to myself. I like the fact that it every now and then you got to pray in the worst circumstances because I've learned if I can pray in the worst I'm a shout in the best and I want to thank God this morning because even though I may be in a downward spiral God says you may be down but when you get down I'm already down with you see some folk gonna get down when you go down but God says when you go down I've already went down and when I when you meet me down there I'm gonna bring you up here oh this is what happens in Jonah chapter number two, Jonah chapter number three, now Jonah is spit up on the dry ground and Jonah begins to preach a message. Oh, Sister Chelsea, he goes to the city of Nineveh and says, repent because in 40 days the Lord is going to give judgment. See, I'm kind of jealous of Jonah because sometimes as preachers, we got to preach a thousand messages and only one person changes. But Jonah went through the city of Nineveh to people that didn't even believe in Yahweh. He preached one message 
And after one message, the whole nation turned around. They put ashes on their head. They repented and turned unto God. Jonah preached one message and everybody changed. And the book says in verse number 10 of chapter 3, when God saw the deeds of the Assyrians, when he saw that they turned from their wicked ways, when he saw the, how wrong they were and they changed their minds, the Bible says that the calamity that God was going to put on the Assyrians, God did not do it. Everybody was rejoicing. Everybody was happy except one person. Bible says in Jonah chapter 4 verse 1 that everybody was happy except Jonah. Jonah was angry that God showed mercy on the Assyrian people. Now, Sister Lachelle is crazy because the same joker that received mercy in Jonah chapter number two does not want to give mercy in Jonah chapter number four. It's something about judgmental folk. You know, judgmental folk, you can receive mercy, but you don't want people to have mercy. You can receive God's grace, but you don't want people to have God's grace. But wait a minute, you ain't no better than me if God can deliver you what makes you think he can't deliver somebody else see somebody done got mad right there because you want to hoard all of God's blessings you think that God is just gonna bless you and your little family but I got news for you boo-boo just because my last name ain't your last name that does not mean that God is not gonna bless me Jonah Jonah did not want the people of Nineveh to receive the mercy of God hold on let me pause real quick can I talk about the mercy of God oh scotch I love the mercy of God because the mercy of God says even when I'm wrong God says I'm not gonna give you what you really do deserve now I know this is not for everybody because everybody is really doing the right thing I know y'all doing the right thing y'all look like y'all doing the right thing you know anytime you go into church you have to look like you at least a little bit holy who y'all look holy you got your holy clothes on even the people on Facebook live that's watching uh, watching in the comfort of their living room you even look holy in your living room but God God says I got mercy for the one that you ain't doing all the right things I got the mercy that's going to be bestowed upon you and don't act like that you're the only one that can receive God's mercy if God's mercy is good enough for me then it's good enough for you but it angered Jonah Jonah was a little bit angry he said in verse number two, this is the reason why I left for Tarshish in the first place. I knew that you were, I knew that you had love and kindness. I knew that you would give mercy. I knew that you were faithful. I knew that you were full of grace. I knew that you were full of love and I didn't want anybody else to have it. Oh, no, Sister Chelsea, it's real interesting. Uh, the same one that received it didn't want to give it. And the same one that received it from God did not want God to give it to somebody else. Y'all don't do this. I know y'all would never do this. But have you ever wondered how did God save that person? I know you'll never say it. You'll never say it verbally. And sometimes you'll kind of whisper it under your mask because ain't nobody can really see what your lips saying anyway. But sometimes you'll say, now wait a minute now. How could God deliver her? I remember what she used to be. How can God deliver them? I remember what he used to do. To, to do but I want you when you have that thought to get up out of your seat and go to the restroom and go to the location where the mirror is located and look at the mirror and look at yourself and begin to ask God how did you save a wretch like me how did you turn to turn my life around so if you can do it for me then you can do it for anybody God asked Jonah a question he said you have reason enough to be angry is what he said in verse number four but verse number five said that Jonah stormed out from the city and sat east of it Jonah was smelling himself to the point he, God asked him a question he ignored God and he went and done his own thing but now God begins to teach Jonah a lesson the book says that Jonah made himself a shelter and he sat under the shade so he could see what would happen in the city but here is the grace of God Jonah who stormed out Jonah who did the wrong thing Jonah who had anger is now about to receive God's grace oh it says it right there in verse six now Jonah made his own little his own little tent brother Charlie Deacon Charlie he made his own little shelter but God said that shelter is not good enough so God appointed or prepared a plant and the plant begins overnight begins to grow over the hut that Jonah had made because now he said now I know that little hut that you made that's that's a little good that's good but I want to give you some supernatural provision even when you are see most people can't understand this but even when you are dead wrong sometimes 
sometimes God will still provide protection. I want to thank God real quick because God is providing shade for Jonah. He brings this, this, this covering over Jonah, and Jonah is extremely happy about the plant. Oh, he's happy and excited about the plant. He's happy about the shade that he now has. But the Bible begins to declare in the next verse that the same shade that was made for Jonah in verse number 6, God now appoints a worm in verse number 7. The book says that the same shade that covered Jonah, that gave Jonah some protection, God now prepared a worm in the very next verse. And the same plant that God made in the previous verse, the worm comes and withers and destroys the plant. I got to tell you sometimes that God will move and he'll do some things that I simply don't know the answer to. God, why would you make a plan and then destroy it in the very next day? God, why would you allow me to go through this season after I've just gone through the previous season? God, why would you allow me to go through this circumstance right now? It is because God is sovereign. God can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. And God is teaching Jonah a lesson. He's teaching him a lesson that shows that I am the one that is in control of all things yes this particular plant is is now destroyed it's withered away by the worm that God has prepared and if that was not bad enough the Bible says that there is now a scorching east wind that begins to blow and the wind blows the shelter the wind blows the plant and now he is to the point that he wants to give up and die and now God begins to ask Jonah a question he said you angry about that plant still God God says you still angry about the plant Jonah said I'm angry to the point of death but Jonah this is what you don't understand you didn't make the plant in the first place you can't be mad over something you didn't create you didn't make the plant I made the plant to give you covering and if the Lord give it the Lord can also take it away so you should be thankful that anytime I give you anything you should be grateful instead of angry over what you lost you ought to be thankful over what I gave oh here's another piece in the text that I want to show about real quick even though Jonah was wrong God was still speaking to him I need to speak to some wrong people in the building I know you're not gonna say nothing I need to speak to some people that are wrong on Facebook live I know you ain't gonna post nothing right now but for the people that are wrong you ought to be thankful that the Lord still has not left your side I want to thank God for a moment that every time I was wrong God still stuck by me have you ever had people walk away from you when things got rough I just want to tell you that God said I'm gonna stick by you even even when your tree dies, even when your loved one dies, even when your money dries up, I'm still the God that's going to stick by you. Hey, I'm the God that delivered you from the ocean. Hey, I'm the God that kept you safe in the belly of the fish. Hey, I'm the God that washed over you in the unemployment line. I'm the God that washed over you with IVs stuck in your arm. I'm the one that washed over you when you caught COVID. I'm the one that washed over your loved one when they were sick. I'm the one that washed over your son when they went to jail. I'm the one that washed over your daughter when she was a lesbian. I'm the one that washed washed over your son when he was hooked on dip and now you think that I'm not going to deliver you how dare you think how dare you think that I'm not going to come through I've always come through I am the Lord your God and if you believe that the Lord is your God you better act like it you better show some signs you better act like the Lord is going to make a way out of no way you better act like the Lord is going to deliver you you better act like the Lord is going to set the captives free you better act like the Lord is going to deliver your mind I don't know where you are right now you may be crying over the death of your loved one you may be crying over the death of your child but I want to tell you that God is still in absolute control if I got anybody in the building or on Facebook you ought to thank God real quick that I got a God that is in complete and absolute control that's why I don't cry about where I am right now that's why I don't worry about what I go through because if God delivered me back in the mid 80s if God watched over me back in 96 if God watched over me back in 99 when I tried to kill myself then I know that God is gonna watch over me now hey let me pull you in if you know that God is going to watch over you. You ought to give your God all of the praise. I don't care the hell that you're in right now. I serve an almighty God. Look at somebody say, I serve an almighty God. 
I want to tell somebody in the building. I want to tell somebody that's watching on Facebook Live. God ain't forgot about you. As a matter of fact, where you are, God says, where you are, I brought you there. And if I brought you there, I'm going to bring you out of there. And when I bring you out of there, you better act like you know who brought you out of there or I'll bring you back in there. See, everybody ain't going to shout over that because everybody want God to bring them out. And then you want to do what you want to do. But God said, if you act a fool, I'll bring you right back to the place where you started from. See, the shouts done got small. The people done start logging off because you want to spin around seven times and receive a blessing. But I want to tell you, you can spin around all you want to until you obey the voice of God. You're going to stay in the same pit. You're going to stay in the same spot. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Do I have anybody that says no matter what I go through, come hell or high water, I will serve the Lord. You still mad about that plant, Jonah? You still worried about a plant you didn't make? If I have compassion over a plant, you know I might have compassion over people. Because I'm sovereign, I can do what I want to do, when I want to do, how I want to do it. He says, the plant, didn't gr the plant grew overnight. I appointed the plant, I appointed the worm. As a matter of fact, I appointed you. And if I did all of this appointing, it must be for a specific reason. It must mean that I still got purpose over your life. I like the fact that the book of Jonah, Miss Donna, it ends with a question. We don't even know the response that Jonah gives. But because Jonah wrote the book, I believe that Jonah had a change of heart. I believe Jonah said, you know what? I've been tripping for real. You know, I think I've forgotten how good God has been. I forgot that I was in the belly of a fish. I forgot that I almost died. I forgot that, that sometimes we get so holy that we forget what God has done. But I want to remove that holiness tag from you just for a moment and look back. If God has not forgotten about you then, what makes you think that God is not going to forget about you now? Hey, I'm done preaching. Y'all tired of hearing it, but I'm going to say it if nobody else say it with me. God, you're sovereign, and I thank you that you're in control over my life. I'm going to say it if ain't nobody else going to say it with me. I'm, I'm thankful that God is in control complete control. Let me say that one more time for the ones in the back that can't hear. I'm glad that God is in control. I'm glad that you can't vote him in. I'm glad that you can't impeach him. I'm glad that it makes no difference about polling locations. I'm the, oh God. I'm so glad that it makes no difference what's going on. I'm glad that God is in control. And if you glad that God is in control, I think you ought to at least put those things together called your hands. If you on Facebook live, I think you ought to at least throw some signs up and I'm thankful that God God is in control. Matter of fact, I want you to say it through your mask. I know you can say it. Say, it, God, you in control of my life. I think somebody ought to type it. God, you're in control of my life. And if God is in control, what are you worried for? If God is in control, why are you worried about your situation? Because God is still in control. Somebody give your God a hand clap of praise all over the building, all on Facebook. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Let me pray before they log off. God, we thank you. We thank you for those that are under the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, that you will bless them and keep them. Father, we may be in our own season, our own drought, in our own dry place, but you are still sovereign. If we're in the dry place, you must want us to learn something there. If we are in a tough spot, you want us to discern something there. God, I don't know why you have us in the situation you have us in. But I'm just glad that you haven't left us while we were in the midst of our situation. So God, we honor you and we thank you. We bless your holy name. And it is all said and done in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you're on Facebook Live, I want to tell you something. If you're on Facebook Live and you desire to join the kingdom of God, you can go to our website at www.mystrongtower.org. You can fill out the contact me page. And if you say that I'm unsaved, I will contact you personally, personally and lead you through the plan of salvation. You can also join our church family. You can also join on Facebook Live. You can also join by going to our website and becoming a member of our uh, growing church family virtually. 
We encourage you to give. There's opportunities for you to give on the website as well. So we give God all of the praise. We thank God for each and every one of you on Facebook Live. Until we meet again, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless. We'll see you next week.